Big Bro Sligs are the super soldiers of the Magog Cartel. These are the elite of the Sligs who chose to have a bit of a boost and become way stronger and way more intimidating than they used to be, which is understandable considering the scrawny little fellas they once were, by pumping their bodies full of performance enhancing drugs. Anabolic steroids are real drugs that are used to increase physical performance and give people bigger muscles, which as you'd expect means that while they're not illegal, at least where I'm from, you're obviously not allowed to take them when doing stuff like competitive sports, as that's just cheating. The Magog Society of Oddworld likely doesn't have such objections to their usage, and as a result, Sligs are free to inject themselves with steroids to become the biggest, strongest soldiers and security officers that they can. You can only imagine how much steroids Big Bro Sligs must have pumped into their bodies to go from the tiny, pathetic creatures they used to be to these massive, hulking monsters. Considering the Sligs are very social creatures, and individual Sligs often get envious of their colleagues that have greater firepower than them, I suspect that Sligs that take the steroid treatment do this primarily out of a self-conscious desire to be stronger than any other Slig. It's interesting to note that one reason steroids in the real world are taken by people is due to concern regarding how one looks, and a desire to gain greater muscle mass to look stronger. It's often an issue of self-image. I could imagine many of the big bros being sligs that do this for the same reason. Although in some cases types of steroids are genuinely given for medical reasons, people are warned against the personal usage of anabolic steroids due to the risks of addiction as well as the many many possible side effects related to taking the drugs. Aside from appearance, one of the things that differentiates a big bro from an ordinary slig is the immensely deep low voice the big bros have developed. Yo, what's that? Upon researching this, and for some reason out of curiosity I made a specific point to look into this aspect of the big bro slicks, as I assumed that this was just done sort of for comedic reasons and just to make them different and sound tougher than a regular slick. And I was surprised to find that actually a deepened voice is a side effect of steroids in real life, so that's apparently something that is actually taken from reality, which surprised me for some reason. It's highly likely that the process of reaching the full muscle capacity of a big bro sleek takes some time and isn't instant. By injecting steroids into their muscles, the sleeks mutate, and their body becomes even more disproportionate than it once was, still possessing relatively small heads and tiny bodies compared to the now intensely massive arms and chests. They look ridiculous and it really can't be good for their physique. Likewise, steroids in the real world are known to have possible severe side effects on people's bodies, as well as psychological side effects, including increased aggressive behaviour, which I would take to be something Big Bro Sligs are thought to be at risk of too, considering after some Big Bros are witnessed fighting each other in Oddworld Munch's Odyssey, the Gog authorities quickly set up anger management classes to prevent future outbursts. Although in this instance, it was simply Abe possessing the Sligs and making them fight each other. Either way, it potentially suggests to me that they're more prone to having and are known for these kind of emotional eruptions relatively frequently. Loser. Another indicator that the steroids in general aren't good for these Sligs is shown by the fact that they have a pump below their head or strapped to their chest, which is used to constantly pump oxygen into them, suggesting that they likely have trouble breathing due to it taking a long time for for oxygen to naturally flow through their now massive bodies, meaning they need to be aided by equipment such as this in order to keep up with the new physical exertion they've put onto their physiques. All this being said, it's very clear that the drugs do enhance these Slig's performances. They're literal super soldiers designed to kill and are way tougher than their two-legged counterparts. It says a lot that before they were known as Big Bro Slig's, Odd inhabitants considered naming them War Slig's or Battle Slig's. Less of your standard infantrymen, like a normal slig, big bros are more comparable to tanks, able to take heavy punishment and dish it out equally. As a consequence of their massive strength, the big bros are given the biggest, baddest weapons a slig can get their hands on. <laughs> and being the elites of the Magog security forces, they are known to take very good care of their weaponry. It says something when their standard weapon in Oddworld Munch's Odyssey, carried by nearly every big bro encountered, is the Blitzpacker, heavy machine gun. The strongest weapon used by Sligs in the entire game, potentially aside from the advanced blunderbuss weapon used by Super Slig. 
Blitz packers were practically designed for these steroid enhanced slicks, the vending machines from which they're acquired literally say big bros on them. Although normal slicks are able to get blitz packers themselves, they're clearly not meant to. And in the event that you possess a normal slick and take a blitz packer from a vending machine, your slick looks very silly carrying this massive hulk of a gun that's practically the size of an ordinary slick's actual body mass. It's amazing that they're even able to utilize the weapons at all. But it says even further just how massive and strong the big bros are. And they carry this gun that dwarfs the average slick as if it's a pistol. Even in the rare event that a big bro doesn't possess their faithful weaponry, their fists still pack an impactful punch, as you'd expect. Now to be honest, I do wonder gameplay wise what the point of big bros without a blitz packer is. They've got this one in Splinters manufacturing that doesn't come with a blitz packer, but there's literally a vending machine for it right next to it. I just wonder why Odd One Happens didn't just give it a blitz packer. Because it's pretty highly, highly likely, I'd say, that the first thing you do when you possess this slick is going to just immediately go and get a blitz packer. You're probably not going to take on all these slick and splinters manufacturing with your fists. So I do wonder why they did that. Maybe just because they were like, well, we've got to use the blitz packer vending machine somewhere in the game. Either way, I think it's more creative and I like that they did this. It's not a criticism, it's a curiosity. I'm just wondering about the reasoning behind it. And it's further interesting that they didn't bother to put this particular type of Big Bro Slick in the game's manuals, perhaps as a slacker Big Bro class, even though they did put stuff in like the Shock Rocker that didn't even end up in the final game. The Big Bro Slicks have been seen to have an even more impressive and expansive arsenal of weapons than what was seen in the game. Being seen in images possessing some kind of electrified baton, perhaps a form of shock rocker, as well as an absolute massive Gatling gun type of weapon, known as the Praying Spray. Although there is no situation in Munch's Odyssey whereby a Big Bro Slick happens to be near the vicinity, or even on the same level as a snoozy vending machine, it is within the game possible for a Big Bro to use the Viker's weapon of choice if they were within reach of one of these machines. As if they weren't already resilient enough, the most elite of the Big Bro Slicks are given protective armour, much like their tiny brothers, and as a result are easily the toughest, most powerful units in the entire Magog security forces seen in the game. Their armour is shown to cover a massive portion of their body in a brass shielding, although this was changed in the HD remake of Munch's Odyssey, where the armour is less bright and more of a rusty steel, I'd say, that protects a significantly less amount of their bodies. Another measure taken by Big Bro Slicks to defend themselves against attack are riot shields. Although not seen in the game, there is an advertisement for Munch's Odyssey that shows the possessed Big Bro Slick pulling one out and using it to deflect the fire of the slicks he starts a fight with. This advert is really interesting, I don't know if it was ever actually commercially shown on television or anything, but from what I can tell and feel about it, considering it displays items and game speak dialogue that wasn't used in the game, it seems to be from relatively early within the Xbox period I'd say. I personally consider this advertisement to be very synonymous with the Big Bro Slicks for me, to the point that while writing this video I just keep humming the music to myself. Like, da 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 is often the first thing I think about when I think of the Big Bro Slicks. Now back to the right shield, there was actually going to be a vending machine for Big Bro Slicks in the game that they could use to acquire one of these shields, but it was cut some time before release. Which is a shame, although then again, I guess they don't really need it, to be honest. The Big Bro Slicks are utilised by the Magog Cartel in many capacities, from riot police to militaristic special forces. In general, they're highly trained, drugged up weightlifting slicks that are brainwashed to have a high sense of discipline and serve as the most effective force the Gluckens can use to put down insurrections and maintain order throughout their entire dominion. They're designed to be a one slig army, most of whom constantly wear camping gear on their backs, ready at all times to deploy, with all the equipment they need already on them. Essentially being special commandos, they're shown having high technical equipment, such as a tactical combat device used to display statistics worn on their wrist, which appears in the original as being red, but in the HD remake of World War Munch Odyssey is green, and shows a bit more detail. They also have unique night vision goggles for their mask with two laser emitting eyes, except on the armoured versions, which have an extra eye for some reason. 
I don't exactly know how they use the extra eye, but there we go. Their mask doubles as a gas mask. This whole look giving me the vibes of like an SAS soldier throwing in a smoke grenade in an area and storming the place down. Speaking of which, concept art shows a different design for the mask, which it refers to as the Stormtrooper version, which normally I'd say is likely a reference to just, you know, like the specialist soldiers known as Stormtroopers used by Germany in World War One. The design here does seem to be resembling, at least to me, the Stormtroopers of Star Wars, which is a really weird reference for them to make, if that is what they were going for. The weight of their newly acquired muscle mass would surely crush the fragile, balanced, delicate pants a slig typically wears, and that's if they were able to even fit in them. As a result, big bro slicks require new massive heavy mechanical legs in order to move their heavy statures. These new four leg designs were inspired by centaurs, and were made to be bulkier, thicker and stronger than your typical slick pants. So some thick slicks right here. I always thought they were very reminiscent of the legs of the snoozers, which makes sense considering both were designed by the Vikers. In fact, apart from looking very similar, they also make exactly the same noise when they walk. However, the big bro's legs also present what is considered their primary weakness, their supposed cumbersome movement that's generally very slow. Yeah, right. Have you seen one of these come at you? It's bloody terrifying. When they want to move fast, they can move bloody fast. And it's absolutely horrifying. It's this that would make me not want to get chased by a big bro slig down a dark alley. Combine that with far deeper and much more intimidating noise it makes as it moves. And you have one menacing mechanical pair of pants right here. Comes to art shows what looks to me to be more lightweight, less slig like designs, such as more, I would say, spider inspired versions. Very predatory, with two smaller legs at the front. Despite the professional elite nature of the big bro slicks, I mean, just look at the way dozens of them just spend their time on high alert, sitting atop massive cylinders guarding areas, like the Queen's Guard or something. They are still, at the end of the day, slicks, and some big bros are shown to still possess the simple slack and slick mentality. Being shown to sleep on the job just like their regular cousins, I'd guess these are the less dedicated big bros, the ones who didn't truly want to put in the work to be elite and just wanted to seem so by lazily injecting themselves with steroids. Whereas the average big bro uses steroids to enhance and increase their performance, the more lazy kind simply uses them as a quick cheating way of building up muscles and trying to be more intimidating. Presumably, these are slicks that simply gained enough moolah to be able to purchase the steroid treatments and ended up as big bros, even if they don't have quite the same discipline as the majority of their kind apparently do. Speaking of which, big bro slicks must be very profitable for the Vikers. Presumably, the steroids that these slicks take are made by Vikers Pharmaceuticals, but as if that wasn't enough, once a big bro buys steroids from the Vikers and develops into massive muscly hunks, they then need even bigger machinery and equipment. Their Centaur style pants, oxygen pumps, blitz packers, all created by the Vikers. And as if that wasn't enough, steroids in real life are known to potentially have addictive qualities, with people that use them being known to get addicted to them, feeling the need to take steroids even when the side effects are doing massive bodily damage to them. This being odd world, I wouldn't be surprised if likewise, the big bro slicks get addicted to the steroids and as a result the Viker pharmacies are continuously providing the slicks with the drugs they desire. I imagine the Vikers consider the big bro slicks as a nice little, or big rather, earner for them, as a result of all these factors. I've always gotten the impression that whereas the regular slicks are provided with pants and equipment by the Gluckens who buy it from the Vikers, I feel like the big bro slicks probably get their steroids directly from Vikers pharmaceuticals. I guess because although the Gluckens are willing to utilise big bros, I feel like they probably wouldn't outright try to turn slicks into them on their own accord due to the cost and it's more like slicks just being self-conscious and wanting to seem tougher and then the Gluckens end up utilising these new newly mutated, physically fit and intimidating big bro slicks as effective special forces. As a result, I always got the impression the creation of the big bro slicks was more of a directly Viker slig relationship as opposed to the Gluckens themselves trying to create them as super soldiers. 
I think they'd consider it unnecessary. Much like a lot of other characters and creatures, Big Bro Sleeks appear on promotional images for Oddworld Hand of Odd, suggesting that they would have appeared as a unit of the industrialised forces in this real-time strategy game that was sadly not made. It's a great shame that the Big Bro Sleeks have therefore so far only appeared in Oddworld Munch's Odyssey and that's it. Although to be honest, one of the things I am critical of Munch's Odyssey for is that whereas in the first two games, each enemy was very different gameplay wise, in Munch, if an enemy is different, it usually just means they have more health and higher damage output. I think the Big Bros are the epitome of this idea. To me, in terms of gameplay, it always seemed unoriginal when you compare to like Abe's Odyssey and Exodus, where for example, a flying slig plays completely differently to an ordinary slig, or a greaser or a fleech. That being said, idea-wise, I really like the concept of the Big Bro Sleeks and find them really interesting. What with the way they're yet another representation of an element of the real world, steroid abuse and that kind of thing. As a result, I think there's great potential for Oddworld inhabitants to really take this idea and do something unique and really interesting with it, perhaps exploring the side effects more in game and showcasing the not yet much seen elite elements and super soldiery that has immense potential to be an intimidating presence and intense challenge for players fighting against the big bro slicks. Hello, follow me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 